what is the glory of God. And uh, a lot of times when you preach a glory, especially if it's a series, uh, sometimes you can't go back what you preached last Sunday because you got some people going to be out of town or can't make it. And that's one thing about series. You just have to, you can't spend all your time what you preached on last time. But I will cover just a little bit because this is my foundational scriptures right here. It's found in Exodus uh, chapter 33 and verse 18. Exodus 33, verse 18. Glory be to God. What is the glory of God? Amen. And it says in Exodus 33, 18, this is Moses talking. And Moses said, I beseech, he's talking to God, I beseech or I beg urgently, I request earnestly to you show me your glory. Show me your glory. And God said, I don't have time. God says, I will. I'll make all my goodness, I'll make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I'll say you instead of the you. And the message Bible is more understandable when it talks about this. God says, I will make my goodness pass right in front of you. Amen. I'll call out the name God right before you. And we discover this, that when he said, I proclaim God before you, in other words, he's also called Jehovah Jireh, the God who will supply. He's called Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee. He's called El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. And so therefore, the glory of God is involved with all these areas. He's the healer. But everything is under goodness. I'm going to show you my goodness. Amen. Matter of fact, the Bible says, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 5 says, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Amen. The word revealed means to make known through divine inspiration. The glory of God is going to be revealed, made known through divine inspiration to make something publicly known to display. Let me read you something that I read that I uh, uh, gave by inspiration a while back. And this is called the awakening, the awakening of the church in the end times. The book of Revelation is coming into view and soon to be seen in the horizon. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is awakened and alive, for it is rising. There will be more perilous times that will take place that will be seen. Much opposition and persecution will manifest to those who are the redeemed. But let not your heart be troubled because of the things that you will see. Your foot shall not be taken as you keep your eyes focused on my word and on me. Dissension, hatred, and discord will increase in the leadership realm of Congress. But it will not stop the blood-bought church that is awakened and alive in the U.S. Disasters that are caused by the atmosphere will increase and bring much harm. Fear not. Keep your heart focused on me, and you won't be alarmed. When you hear of the disturbance that are taking place all around you, stay persistent in faith, and there will be nothing the enemy will be able to do. The end of the last days are upon you, so stay hot in the spirit and in the word. Take heed to what you are hearing today, and take heed to what you have heard. The devil is the god of this world, and he is out to destroy and to deceive. Use the authority that I have given you in my name, and you will overcome indeed. Beware of those who will promise you prosperity and riches overnight. Their motives are to get you to pull back from the word, your interest to the light. When you see all these things come to pass, you'll know without a doubt that I'm about to appear through the horizon and bring you up and out. So rejoice, and again I say rejoice, for my coming is near. You are about to be taken out, and finally in heaven you will be here. Amen. 
So I believe soon and very soon we are going to see the king, right? You remember that song? Soon and very soon we're going to see the king. Amen. Now, um, the Bible says, uh, Isaiah 60, verse 2, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. The word seen means to perceive by the eye, to have experience. That's what happened to Monique. She experienced the move of God in her life because she came expecting. Now, to visualize, it means to know and understand, to be aware of. So tonight is the launching pad of another message uh, uh, from that one, continue on the glory of God. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 3, and if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Now, I looked at the word glorious. The Bible calls it the glorious gospel. Glorious, actually, if you look at the word glorious, it's, it's victory. It's the victory gospel. Beautiful. Beautiful. How beautiful are the feet of them who, sh who shed with the preparation of the gospel. The, it, the glory is called victory. Beautiful. Full of splendor. Magnificent, delightful, wonderful. And I, so I began to do a study on glor glorious in the Bible. What did it say about glorious and what it was talking about? So I just put down the, a little bit of what the glorious talk about in the Bible. And this is what I, what I found. Glorious in power. Glorious in hope. Glorious in the name. All this is in the Bible. Glorious in in kingdom, glorious in things, glorious in honor, glorious in majesty, glorious in his voice, glorious in the Lord, glorious in liberty, glorious in gospel, glorious in church, glorious in body, glorious in his appearing, all glorious. That's why it's called the glorious gospel. Now, the gospel will work for us in its glorious, and the glory of God will be manifested to us if we listen and receive the gospel and believe and expect it. You've got to have a spirit of an expectancy right in the midst of chaos, a spirit of an expectancy. Now, I'm going to go through a, a couple of places that we've talked about concerning healing, but I'm going to approach it in a different way because in the midst of this, it talks about the glory of God. Amen. Anytime you see a manifested healing in anybody, you have seen a manifestation of his glory. Now, John chapter 11, verse 1. John 11, verse 1. Amen. Amen. It says, now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard it, he said, this sickness is not unto death. This is where people miss it right here. It says, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. It, it sounds like God is saying, this sickness is not unto death. In other words, this sickness is for the glory of God so God can receive the glory when it gets healed. The Bible did not, it did not say that. He did not say this sickness is for, he did not say this sickness is for the glory of God so God can get the glory. Now the message Bible says this, which is right on it. 
When Jesus got the message, he said, this sickness is not fatal. This sickness is not fatal. It will be, this sickness will become an occasion or an opportunity to show God's glory by glorifying God's Son. You understand that? Let me read that again. Jesus heard the message, got the message, this sickness is not fatal. This sickness is not for the glory of God because there's no glory in sickness. This sickness is not fatal. It will become an opportunity. This sickness will become an opportunity for us to show God's glory by glorifying God's Son. Let me go back to the beginning. It said, he said, this sickness is not under death, but for the glory of God. Now, can you understand why we would say, well, that's, he's got this sickness so God can get glory. He didn't say that. Oh, you listen, you're going home already. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death. Or, this sickness is not fatal. But for the glory of God, not the sickness, but for the glory of God, the Son will receive the glory. Now, in the message Bible again, when Jesus got the message, he said, this sickness is not fatal. It will become an occasion, opportunity to show God's glory by glorifying God's Son. In other words, God's going to get the glory not because of the sickness, but because the occasion of giving God the glory of him getting well. And notice it goes on. We're going to talk more about the glory of God. Notice in verse 32, Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, the Jews also weeping which came with her, they're all weeping. She's weeping. Everybody's weeping. They love Lazarus. Notice what Jesus did. Jesus groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have you laid him? Then, say, then said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Oh, when Jesus wept, they thought he's, he's wept because everybody was weeping. No, he wept because of their unbelief. I'll prove it to you. Then said, he, then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again groaning in himself, coming to the grave. It was a cave and a stone laid upon it. Jesus said, Take you away the stone. And Martha, the sister of him, that was dead, said, Lord, by this time he stinketh, he stinks, been four days. He has been four days, Master. You're going to embarrass yourself? Jesus said unto her, notice what he said, said not I unto you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God. The same spirit of an expectancy. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. God's talking to us. If we come to church expecting, believing, we will see the glory of God. The reason why Monique experienced the glory of God, a healing in her body, because she believed and she came expecting and God honored that and the glory got involved and began to shake her hands and her legs and healed her because she came to believe. He said, if you will believe, you should see the glory of God. The glory, the word glory also means honor. You see the honor of God. You see the majesty of God. You see the liberty of God, the power of God, the kingdom of God, the work of God, and it will be glorious. Amen. 
So that's one uh, area that I've heard people say this. You know, the devil will come to deceive. He'll take one, he'll take one thing right here, like that scripture, and 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 bring and, and and people will believe that scripture, but he'll emphasize that. See, the man is sick for the glory of God. That's a lie. But you don't have the revelation of that. Well, even when it comes to righteousness, I had a man, his name is Ed. Uh, he, I used to work with him in a machine shop. And Ed was uh, very religious. Not as a Christian, he's just religious. He got some dumb beliefs. He said nobody, and, 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 and nobody is righteous. Nobody. For all have fallen short of the glory of God. I said, Ed, you're right. Here I am, a young man, and he's older than me, and I knew more than he did. But I let him, I give him a little rope and let him hang himself. He said, no man is righteous. I said, Ed, the Bible is talking to more than just one group of people. The Bible is talking to the Gentiles, the sinners. He's talking to the believers. You are right on that one part. For all have fallen short of the glory of God. Yeah, we've all fallen, fallen short. Before I got saved, I was unrighteous. And he said, and he, the Bible says that, there is none righteous, no, not one. He said, there is nobody righteous. I said, Dad, he's talking to the sinner, not to the believer. There's nobody that's, that's a sinner is righteous. There's none righteous, no sinner. There's none righteous, no, not one. But I am no longer a sinner. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. And the Bible says, For God hath made him, Jesus, to be sin for us, that we, the believer, might be made the righteousness of God. I was a sinner, and God made me righteous now. My dog tag is not, I'm unworthy. I'm a sinner. No. I was a sinner, and I got saved by grace. So I don't say I'm an old sinner saved by grace. I was an old sinner, and I got saved by grace, but now I'm the righteousness of God. That's, that's the glory of God, revealing his will for us. Now, Now, what about the man that was born blind? Some people say, well, it was God's will that certain people be born blind. It's God's will that they be born that way so he can get all the glory. The lies of the devil. We don't understand everything. I, I, we don't understand, but it, through generations, some people die with this disease, that disease. God didn't do it. Don't we remember the scripture, the devil comes to steal, to kill, and destroy? He said, I come that you may have life. See, when the glory is in manifestation, out of that glory it becomes revelation to us what God, who God is really like. What about the blind man, John chapter 9? The blind man, John chapter 9. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. Oh, you know when I say life is good, I said the other day, life is good. Well, life is good. Well, take a deep breath. Life is good. You got breath. Life is good. How many of you can see me? Can you see me? Life is good. You got vision. Focus on the good things that you have. Amen. Amen. Life is good. Even though you might be going through a storm, going through some chaos, and just stop, think about it. But life is still good. I'm breathing. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? You know, I believe that Jesus was probably a little aggravated at that time. I believe Jesus could have been a little bit aggravated. He's thinking... Why are you trying to figure out why he's blind? Don't focus on why he's blind. 
Master, who did see this man or his parents that he was born blind? And then Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sin nor his parents. In other words, shut up. Don't try to figure out why he's blind. Don't focus on that. There's too many people, they, they focus on how come somebody's sick. What did they do to get sick? They must have committed some type of a sin. Don't focus on that. Amen. Don't focus on why this man is blind. This is what Jesus, what you need to focus on is this. That the works of God should be made manifest in him. It didn't say he was born blind so the works of God could be made manifest in him. He was born blind from his mother's womb. He was born blind. Don't focus on that. He said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. Now, let me give you a few translations. The New Living Translation said, we must quickly carry out the task assigned to us by the one who sent us. The Message Bible said, we need to be energetically at work for the one who sent me here. Let's not focus on why he's blind. Uh, God's Word says, we must do what the one who sent me wants to do while it is day. So thank God for the glory of God and manifestation. How many of you, uh, maybe you have kin folks, you know people that goes to a church, maybe you don't go to church. Let me, let me tell you what, one of, the, one of the attacks of the devil, let me tell, I'm prophesying this to you, it's true. One of the attacks of the devil is trying to get people's attention off of the Word of Faith movement. The Word of Faith movement is not a movement it's word of faith. It's always been word of faith. Why? Anyone that preaches the overcoming life, you're going to have what you say, that you be become righteous in the sight of God. And, and you begin to prosper in financial blessings. And all the, they, they call it a cult. That's a cult teaching. A cult teaching. They'll, they'll put, they'll, they'll down Kenneth Copeland. They've done that. They, they, they down Prophet Hagen. They, they'll, they'll down any ministry and because they don't believe in you can have what you say. Hey Amen. Are you listening to me? We are, uh, we are a word of faith. Paul says the word of faith which we preach. Faith believes God. Faith believes God if he says that he's my healer, then he's my healer. If he says I will recover, I will recover. They don't believe calling those things that be not the word. I do. I'm healthy today because what I believe. Amen. I'm not bad for 46. Now, some people will live and die and will never experience the last move of the Holy Ghost. Like Brother Hagin said, their, their mind is like cement, thoroughly mixed and well set. I'm not going to believe that I'm healed until I can feel myself healed. Why should you believe it then? You ought to know it. Until then, you believe that you receive your healing, and then you'll see the manifestation. Or you listen to me. Now, uh, there, there's two sides to a coin. There's a head side, and there's a tail side. Now, I've been mostly talking about the head side. The head side. Let's talk about the tail side of this thing. The thing that we <laughs> got to do. You mean I, I come to church tonight and you're going to tell me some things I got to do? No, I come to see what God's doing for me. It's all about me tonight. No, 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 no. I'm going to talk a few moments about, now don't shut me down because I'm preaching good now. This is going to be, it's a, turn to your neighbor and say, this is going to be stuff. Yeah. Carnal people will not experience God. 
Carnal people will not experience the move of God. They are easily offended. They do not like long services. The clock watches. If you go beyond, like a, 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 this is a true story of a preacher. Someone told me in South Carolina, he was up there behind the pulpit, and, and he had a, was ministering. And when the clock struck 12 o'clock, a lady actually stood up and threw her shoe at him and said, it's time to go home. I mean, it's time to go home. One of them had a little call up there when it's 12 o'clock or what time it was. They had it, it goes, it goes off. It, see, people became adjusted to that. Okay, we not service. We come 7.30 and we get out 8.30. But what happens if God changes that? That's why I don't call it our power. Because if I say this is our power, if we go over an hour, people get offended. Not you, of course. You're not religious. Don't be scared. I'm not going no two hours or not. Don't, don't, don't be fearful. <laughs> but if the Holy Ghost wants to, we will. You know, the, uh, some people, the, the clock watcher, they're, they're, they're quick to uh, complain. Now, these are the people that's not going to receive the, uh, the, the blessings of the glory of God in their lives. Uh, they're slow to repent. They don't repent. You know, they, um, they're full of pride anyway. You can't tell them anything. They know more than you do anyway. The negative in their conversation, uh, the double-minded, the more hunger for the things of the world, has no, no, has no burning for the word of God, the hearers of the word, not hearers only. So God is not going to make the healing come into you. Now, some people, they get healed instantly. Praise God for them. Some people get healed over a period of time. Either way, healing is God's a glory. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with uh, medicine. There's nothing wrong to go to a doctor. The medicine don't heal you. The doctors don't heal you. The doctor said, I can prescribe, I can cut, I can do surgery, but I can't heal. God's the healer. God can do a miracle through the surgeon's hands. Nothing wrong with that. So, yes, I do believe in doctors. Brother Hagin said this. He said, if it wasn't for doctors, most Christians would be dead. <laughs> But thank God for doctors. I, I went to a doctor for, I go for regular checkups. I went, uh, this has been about, what, two years, two and a half years ago, I went to a doctor, and she said that uh, you have a health of a 30-year-old. Wow. I was hoping she said, I have a body of a 30-year-old. <laughs> but she didn't say that. But I said, but I'm happy with my health. Amen. So uh, we must hunger for the glory of God. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see. Now, in the natural, you that, uh, uh, now, I enjoy, aren't you glad that God put food on the earth to eat? Aren't you glad he gave you taste buds? I mean, you, I mean, if you couldn't taste food, God, God's smart, isn't he? He's all-knowing. So when he made man, okay, now, I want him to eat. That's good for his body. So I better give him some little taste buds in there so he can have flavor. There's some things you don't like. I don't like that. But you can always find things you do like. I can eat just about anything. You like that? No, I eat it anyway. It's food. Amen. And, and so, but if you eat food all at once, you quit eating, you get hunger. You get hungry. What do you do when you get hungry? You eat. And you're not thinking about your body. You, you think, all you think about is, I want to eat something. And so when you eat, it's funny that when you get full, you don't, I mean, I love, I love uh, lobsters. I love shrimp, crab legs. Why? I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. I love it. But I can go eat and get real full. I get real full. It's funny. 
I don't know. I don't want nothing else. I, I, I no longer desire lobsters. I, I don't want no more. I'm, I'm, I'm content. I'm happy. But what happens when I get hungry again? Oh, lobster or whatever I want. Well, the Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How do you taste the word? Do you just eat, eat it? No. Do you, do you tear a piece of paper out and start eating the word? No, no. No, you don't do that. Thy words were found, and I did eat them, the Bible says. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. Thy words was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. How do I eat the word? Through my confession. When you confess the word, you hear, you're actually eating the word of God. Not just listening. You can hear the word of God all day long. But when you confess it, you, only, you hear it from the, not only the outer ear, but the inner ear you hear. Thy words are found, I did eat them. The glory of God is in the word, and the word is the gospel. So if you need a pill, take the gospel. The gospel, the gospel. The more you confess the word of God, the more you're convinced that you're healed. The more you say you're healed, you're convinced. You're eating the word of God like I said. That's why the Bible says you can have what you say because what we say, we're actually eating the food. Now, if I go to a restaurant and I go and I sit down and the food smells real good, smells real good, well, all I do is just smell it. I don't partake of it. It won't do me any good. You can go to church, and the, the Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So he's comparing the word with bread. So uh, uh, you, you come in, and, and you smell the message. Oh, that sounds good, yeah. Oh, I'm righteous. That, oh, that's good. I'm righteous. I, it smells good. Uh, but until we partake of it and start talking about it, that's when it becomes bread to us. The glory of God can manifest through the word of God. It can manifest through, uh, you know, uh, well, let me just say this. If you don't eat food, you'll become hungry. So how do we get hungry for the word? If we deny our flesh from controlling us, we will begin to hunger for the things of God. The, the Bible says in Galatians 5, 16, this I say then walk in the spirit. And Jesus says by words there are spirit in their life. That's Galatians 5, 16. This I say then walk in the spirit. And do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the lust of the flesh is against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary one to the other. So the more we walk, leave the flesh behind us, and walk in the word of God, we'll hunger more for the things of God. I have another song I'm going to be singing, not tonight, um, about uh, hungering for God. Having a hunger for God. Walk in the spirit and you not fulfill the lust of the flesh. There's so much about the glory of God. The meek shall inherit the earth, the Bible says. The meek shall inherit the earth. Thank God. Thank God for the glory of God. The glory of God can be seen. The glory of God can be seen. And you can read into the Bible, you can read the Bible where a lot of times the temple, the glory of God was in the temple and they could not enter in to the temple because the glory of God was there. Amen. If you have a chance to get that book by Brother Hayden called I Went to Hell. I Went to Hell. That book, it's a little mini book and I don't know if we have it in a bookstore or not. I Went to Hell. It gives testimony of, of him dying and going to hell and as, uh, as his, his grandmama was praying and uh, how he came out of hell and God took him to heaven and said, I... Your time, not, your time on earth is not done yet. You've got to go back. And, and so uh, if you get a chance to read that book, you know, read good books. Read books that build your faith up. Don't just read any books. Don't, don't read books that just, just kind of, I don't know. I, I'm just, I mean, I'm not into, 
I, I really read books that's uh, going to build, build my faith up. You know, Smith Wigglesworth, remember, remember if you read about him? He will not allow any newspaper in his house. Remember, remember that? Somebody come and he said, get out of my house. I don't, I don't believe in that. So he, he, would, he, he would only feast on the Word. He only feasted on the Word of God. He didn't want that, read that junk. Boy, in that case, if it was him, we'd get all the television out of the house too. Shut the media down. You can't go to Google anymore. Let me say, I'm going to talk to you as a pastor. Google is lies. I mean, they tell a lot of lies. Lies. And you can't, you can't, so you can't go to Google. You've got to Google the Word of God. And it tells you the truth. Amen. Amen. You know, you go, you go to Google, you'll find out something. Just type in there, it'll take you, what are you going to find? But I'll tell you what, but you go to the Word of God and, and type in, okay, I thank God for the Bible, Bible program. Who, who's got a Bible program on your computer? Oh, thank God. I remember sitting at the kitchen table. And I had my Bible, I had my Bible, I had the King James Version, I had the Living Bible, message Bible, I had all my Bibles on. I had my pencil and writing down, took me hours to get a message ready, because I had to look up this, this number, go to the Greek, go to the Hebrew, and find out what, but now the Bible program, you click on message Bible, uh, on different translations, and you ask God, it's amazing, praise God. I've got thousands of messages, praise God, on my computer, amen. Glory to God. It's amazing, praise God. God is so good. I want to encourage you, read your Bible more. If you got one on, if you got it on a computer, whatever, read it, study it. And if you got one at the home, just take, get the dust off of it and open it up and read it. it it'll bless you. Amen. Did you get anything out of this? Yes. Amen. Say, I, I, love the I love the Word of God. I I love the glory of the anointing. And I'm going to share this, not in this message, I'm going to share I'm going to share what the glory of God did in her life. A testimony I shared before and, and, and uh, where she got so full of the glory of God and the Holy Ghost, she could not speak in English. She could not speak in English. She could barely talk because the glory of God can do wonders. God can do wonders and it changed her life. And she would never, she would never, she had no anointing to preach. She wouldn't preach. She always had a desire to preach. And yet after that, it turned her around. God's Spirit, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, because the Spirit is the glory of God, all the goodness of God. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We thank you. We give you all the praise, all the glory for your, for your word. And I stretch forth my hand right now to everyone in this household, and we thank you for the glory of God that's hovering over this congregation. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that the glory of God can do a work that no man can do. The glory of God, the Spirit of God can open the eyes of the blind and open those eyes. And those that's watching on video, those that's watching on the monitors, whatever, right where you are, the glory of God is moving right now and calling your eyes to open up, your ears to open up in the name of Jesus. Command arthritis to bow its knee. We command sickness to leave that body in the name that's above that name. Ha, 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 ha. In the name that's above every name, glory be to God. We thank you for the people here tonight. We thank you for the moving of the Holy Ghost in their bodies, in their mind, physically, mentally, in every area. And Father, we give you praise and thanksgiving in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Turn to someone and say, Amen. Thank you for joining us at Living Word Church. Living Word Church McDonough is located at 185 Tunis Road, McDonough, Georgia, 30253. In-person services are held Sundays at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Children's services are available every service for ages birth through 12 years old. If you would like to financially support this ministry, you can do so by using the Give Now button on our website at livingwordchurch.com.